Let's face it, the days of using a Vi-Air or ARB compressor to air up tires is pretty much over. You know, they worked, but the uh, portable compressors take forever. And the onboard air systems, you know, they're a pain in the ass to install. They take up a lot of room. They put wear and tear on the battery. You know, they really aren't 100% reliable. And uh, even with the small auxiliary tank under your Jeep or Toyota, you know, they don't have enough volume to seat the bead on a 40 inch tire or run air tools adequately. So CO2 tanks begin to show up in the off-road world about 20 years ago, you know, when people would uh, make their own takes by piecing together uh, beverage container supplies, basically. You know, but uh, they didn't really become mainstream until a uh, power tank started uh, mass producing complete CO2 systems. You know, the reason that uh, CO2 tanks became a necessity is that uh, folks started running larger and larger tires and begin wheeling on tougher and tougher trails. You know, uh, airing up four 40 inch tires from seven PSI to 30 PSI was a uh, exercise in futility for most off-roaders. So these tanks started to become really popular as the tires got bigger and bigger in the off-road world. Undoubtedly, Power Tank still makes the best and most complete off-road CO2 system but you know, they want, what, $500, 500 plus dollars for the complete system. You know, Smitty Built also makes a cheaper version that's made with low quality Chinese components and a regulator that likes to freeze up a lot, you know, but they want $300 for that. You know, in this video, we're gonna piece together our own good quality CO2 system for well under $200. The first item we need to order for our CO2 system is a tank. You know, a 10 or 15 pound tank is the perfect size for off-roading. You know, I personally prefer the 10 pound size for its ease of mounting and the fact that a tank this small can last for a few off-road trips, no problem. You know, even when you're airing up 40 inch tires. You know, aluminum or steel construction really doesn't matter. Just make sure you purchase a tank that has a CGA 320 valve on it. Remember, it needs to have a CGA 320 valve on it. You know, and, and make sure the certification date is recent. You know, CO2 tanks need to be tested and recertified every five years, so uh, don't get stuck buying a tank on Amazon that's about to expire. You know, uh, many vendors on Amazon and eBay guarantee recent certification, and it might be worth it to buy one of those tanks. You know, uh, I also prefer tanks with a handle on it. You know, uh, the handle not only makes it easy to carry the tank, but uh, it also protects the valve from damage. You know, I, I bought this aluminum CO2 tank with the CGA 320 valve and handle installed for uh, $75. So if you look around, you can really find deals on these. So uh, now that you have a recently certified tank with a, a CGA 320 valve and a handle on it, now it's time to purchase a regulator. Power tanks come with a really nice dual gauge regulator, but uh, after 10 years of using these regulators and trying out other homemade systems, I've come to the conclusion that they're not really necessary. I mean, let's face it, gauges aren't necessary for CO2, and I really never touch the regulator knob after I set it to inflate tires anyways. A simple and inexpensive fixed 150 PSI high flow regulator is all you're ever going to need for filling up big off-road tires and for running power tools. This regulator can be had for around $40 on eBay or Amazon. As a matter of fact, this is the same exact regulator that Poly Performance sells and rebrands. So this is a really good regulator. You know, I also added this $15 2000 PSI gauge to the regulator so I can verify when the tank is empty. I also spent five bucks on this 45 degree fitting and another five bucks on this really high quality brass coupler right here. And this is one of the six ball bearing design brass couplers, not four like most of them are. You know, and this was only five bucks. So for $65, you can get a good quality regulator, coupler, fitting, and gauge. Not bad.
This is what the regulator looks like with the gauge and coupler installed. Basically, this is ready to go into the tank now. At this point, you should weigh the tank empty, but with the handle and the valve still on. Take the regulator off. Now, uh, when you weigh this, you want to mark the tank with permanent ink. This particular 10-pound aluminum tank with the valve and the handle and all the hardware for it weighs 14 and a half pounds. You want to mark that on the tank because this is the only way you're going to know how full your tank is and the only way you'll know for sure if you're being ripped off that by the place that fills up your CO2 bottle. You know, remember, CO2 is not compressed air. It's liquid inside this tank that boils off gas to maintain a certain pressure. You know, under normal temperatures, usually the pressure inside a tank like this is going to be between eight and 900 PSI, but it can be as high as 2,000 PSI on a 120 degree day out in Death Valley, you know, and as low as, you know, five, 600 PSI on a freezing cold day. So it varies depending on temperature. This gauge right here, you know, is essentially useless for determining how full the tank is. You know, this gauge will not tell you how much CO2 is in the tank. It'll only tell you if your tank still has liquid in it or not. Therefore, this gauge really isn't necessary at all. The next thing we need to get is a hose. You know, I prefer a recoil hose like this for this application due to the simplicity and the space-saving nature of the hose. You know, be mindful that most quarter-inch recoil hoses are only rated for 120 PSI, and you want more than that. I recommend a good hose rated for 200 PSI. You can read that on there. I bought this 200 PSI recoil hose on Amazon for $10. It gets pretty good reviews. Now we move on to the actual tire inflator. You know, you can get an expensive American-made $200 digital gauge, you know, on down to a simple $4 ball chuck. You know, but for this build, I went with the Jayco digital gauge. You know, I purchased this digital tire inflator off of uh, Amazon for $38. It gets excellent reviews and seems good so far. I've used it on my old power tank a few times and it looks it seems really good and really accurate. It uh, comes with a great chuck design. I really like this. But uh, if you have really hard to reach valve stems, like the ones on Becca's Method Beadlocks, These uh, lock-on ball chucks are the cat's ass, so I'm going to put one of these lock-on ball chucks on there instead for those hard-to-reach valve stems. <music> Mounting a CO2 tank in your off-road vehicle it's actually pretty easy. You know, you can use these cheap $7 quick fist clamps, you know, and, and these work pretty damn good, especially if you use two of them, you know. Or you can opt for one of the pricier metal mounts, you know, from Pro Comp or Power Tank. And these are pretty cool too. You know, uh, but pretty much you can mount these tanks anywhere. So here's the completed CO2 system right here and uh, you know as you can see went together really well you know and even though it's a uh, hundred and twenty dollars cheaper to put together than the low quality Smitty built kit it's uh, actually built with high quality components and the whole system balances out really well you know this uh, 150 psi regulator right here is absolutely perfect for airing up big tires or even seating the beads on top big tires and uh, you know it'll run power tools too so you know there's no need for an adjustable regulator and uh, you know I'm really happy 
with this J Jayco Dis digital gauge seems to be pretty accurate so far and uh, I really like this system and what I really like about it is it's a lot lighter than my power tank system too so that's a big plus so here it is this entire co2 system cost me about hundred and ninety dollars and you can easily do it for about hundred and fifty dollars with a cheaper tire inflator and no gauge because the gauge isn't necessary you know that's over three hundred dollars cheaper than the power tank system and about hundred and twenty dollars cheaper than the uh, low quality smitty built system you know after doing this I have to say I'll never buy a complete co2 tank kit again you know and and instead I'll build another one just like I did in this video you know and as always thanks for watching my video and keep the rubber side down